Well, you have to wonder, is there a great disturbance of the force? And is my midi-chlorian count right now climbing off the charts, baby? Let's dive into it. Right now! And welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Market Value Chart Show right here at Six Scale Cantina. And man, oh man, I am excited to bring you a Market Outlook edition of the Market Value Chart Show. And I'll be serving up all the Star Wars, Hot Toys, secondary market news, which there is quite a lot of, ladies and gentlemen. But before we head on over to SixScaleCantina.com, and start as we usually do, within the biggest mover section. I first want to announce that I will be a special guest this coming Friday on the Man of Hot Collectibles live anniversary stream at 9 p.m. Eastern. So please go ahead and book that on your calendars. This Friday, it is his turn for his show. I had mine this past Friday, and if you didn't see that yet, Please go and check it out. I have the link to that live episode within the video description below. It was a real fun, fun time, and I highly, highly recommend that you check it out if you haven't yet. But again, go ahead and book on your calendars this Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern. The Man of Hot Collectibles will be live, and the Dark Jedi, Ares Tarrington, will be there on his paddle for sure. So... Let's go ahead and start off with the first segment of the Market Value Chart Show in this Market Outlook Edition and head on over to SixScaleCantina.com and see what is going on. So a quick scroll through over here. There's actually some familiar faces, some new faces, some revisits, and a whole lot of differences and shakeups and shuffles all over the place, and you got up arrows and down arrows and all kinds of craziness right now. But let's go ahead and start off with what we see here on your screen. So we talked about this in the last episode, in the Hot Toys Talk Edition. I brought up a few of these, and I talked about the Short Trooper, which is trending down and still is. We're going to keep an eye on it. And we're going to see if that stays within the $500 tier range or if this figure goes back up to the $600 tier range. We're going to have to keep an eye on it and see what happens. The Mud Trooper continues to trend down. So, again, as I mentioned in the last episode, if you've been looking for a Mud Trooper and, you know, you were thinking that this figure right now was in the low 400s or mid 400s to pick up, you can actually get this figure right now in the low, and I mean low, $300 tier range at the moment. So if you've been looking for one, this may be the time. And from the Mud Trooper, let's go ahead and take a look at Ray. A familiar face lately during the past weeks on the Biggest Movers section, but this week with a down arrow, trending down. So. What's going on with Ray? Because in the last episode, the Hot Toys Talk Edition, I mentioned that Ray and BB-8 was starting to trend down as well. And now you're starting to see Ray the Last Jedi trend down. And really, let's first go ahead and take a look at some recent activity with Ray within the marketplace. So let me go ahead and pull up uh, a few of these, actually. So you can see here, back from June 4th, $300 with 21 bits. Really good feedback and a lot of feedback. U.S. seller, not including the $15 in shipping, not including taxes, of course. So still a very healthy amount 
for this action figure, but not within or close to that $400 tier range where she broke into and was at for a little bit. Let's go to another one. Bringing this up onto the screen. And this one was $265. Now, granted, overseas seller, but still, $265 US back from May 30th, 12 bits. It was $40 shipping. Okay? But for a highly sought after figure, this is still, you know, lower than where it would it, it was going. Let's go to another ray. And bringing this ray from The Last Jedi, this Jedi training one up. And you can see here, back from May 30th, $338 with two bids, not including the $34.45 in expedited shipping, U.S. seller. So basically, really, $350, you could say, for this figure. Again, still a very healthy amount. And when a figure does average $400, or where this one was, like $411, that doesn't mean it always sells within the $400 tier range. That means it sells well into the $400 tier range, could possibly hit the $500 tier range, but that means it's still selling within the $300 tier range. But what's happening here, and the reason why it's trending down, is not just because of these uh, three auctions that, that I've shown you. But there's been a myriad of data that has now, uh, you know, shown that she is selling more now into the $300 tier range. So she has fell out of the $400 tier range. Exactly where is she at? We're going to see once we get to the market value chart a little bit later in this podcast. But just as I mentioned in the last Hot Toys Talk Edition, podcast. I brought up some of these. I talked about Ray and BB-8 that that has started to trend down. And you have to wonder, why exactly is that? And really this started to take effect not when these final production photos came out, but just about a few days later where afterwards a lot of the reviews of the Ray from the Rise of Skywalker started to make their way onto the internet. And a lot of pictures from unboxings coming straight onto the internet. But this Ray right now, and I've mentioned it before, it is absolutely a stunning and gorgeous figure. And pulling up some of these you could see up here on the screen. And for many collectors, this is superior than the Ray that comes with the BB-8 and the Ray from even The Last Jedi. I mean, pulling up a comparison here, you could see there's Ray from The Rise of Skywalker, and then there's also one from Ray from The Force Awakens. And while the Force Awakens one is good, it's just for many collectors, the Rise of Skywalker one is, you know, superior. And when you go ahead and pull up everything on Sideshow, so that's why I said I'm going to be mixing in segments at the beginning of the program. And so we're going to actually go to Sideshow. Now, I have this sorted out specifically at this moment everything Hot Toys, but not just Star Wars, but Marvel as well. I've got Star Wars and Marvel in here for Hot Toys, and I also have Sideshow, you know, their six scale put in here as well. And when you take a look at this right now, you've got and forget about Grievous in a moment, because we're going to get to him in a little bit later, a little bit later in this podcast. But sticking with Ray right now, would you go ahead and feast your eyes on Ray? Because not only is she the number one pre-order, now I have this sorted out pre-orders. I don't have any in-stock items, so keep that in mind. 
but everything pre-order, Star Wars for Hot Toys, Marvel for Hot Toys, Sideshow for six-scale action figures. Rey Skywalker is right behind Grievous. And if it wasn't for Grievous, she would be, well, and she is the number one selling hot toy. She is selling more than the Tony Stark Mark V suit up. And more than the War Machine. And more than Captain Rex. And more than the Artillery Stormtrooper. And more than Echo. And more than Stormtrooper Commander. And yes, more than Kylo Ren. Boba Fett from The Empire Strikes Back. And more than Captain America. Wow. 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 So you have to wonder, is it possible that a lot of the demand that was in the secondary market for the Ray figures has shifted somewhat to this rise of Skywalker Ray in a big, big, big way? And I say, yes. It absolutely has. That's why you're seeing her ahead of War Machine, Rex, and, and Tony Stark, and right next to Grievous. So naturally, when you go ahead and see some of these prices within the secondary market, and I'll pull one back again, and again, it's not that it's bad. They're still, still doing well. You see, right back from May 30th, $338, bringing this one back again. And with, you know, near $35 in shipping. U.S. seller with perfect feedback. But the thing of it is, it is more so selling now within the 300s than it was within the 400s. And the same thing with the Ray and the BB-8 set is a little bit down from where it was. And I really, really do think that this particular Ray figure is going to be a very highly sought after figure once it hits waitlist. Watch out for sure, because this figure, I believe, will sell better, not only than the Ray and BB-8 set, but this Ray and Dio. This figure will, in short order, surpass wherever the last Jedi version of Rey is within the secondary market, and probably hit a high $300 tier range in an almost instant. And is it possible that this Rey can be a $400 tier range figure at the end of the day? And I say, yes. But why? Why do I say yes on that? And the thing that you have to keep in mind is there are, so, there are going to be so many more rays from The Force Awakens and rays from The Last Jedi, it, it's not even fun. And with the demand for this ray from The Rise of Skywalker, supply and demand, and for that particular ray right now to be selling the way it is on Sideshow, I mean, you, you have really got to be kidding me at this particular point. Pull the get back up there again, just to make sure our eyes are not playing tricks on us. And you can see how I have this sorted out here. And let me tell you, they are not going to produce a whole lot of Rise of Skywalker figures for this Ray or this Kylo at all. And again, I'm, I'm pointing this out. If this is a figure that you want, or Ray was a character you have been looking for, this is the least expensive right now within the secondary market at $243. Correction, actually. If you got Ray 
from The Force Awakens without BB-8, you can probably get that cheaper with shipped in taxes than probably the 243. That That's the one that doesn't move all that well, the one without BB-8. But um, this is probably your best option right now financially. And again, as I always say, don't fall for the hype, but follow the hype. Because there's always a lot of talk about, oh, these figures will sit in stock. But there's also Star Wars figures eventually all go on wait list. So how do you know? How do you manage your time? Let me tell you how you manage your time with this one. If this is a figure that you've been looking for and you think it's going to get in stock and sit in stock for the three months like Commander Cody did, that is absolutely not going to happen. This is a major red alert on Ray from the Rise of Skywalker. And if this is a figure that you're interested in, or you've been interested in the Ray, you may want to consider this Ray, because this Ray is going to say bye-bye, baby, very, very quickly. And I believe will be a $400 tier range figure very quickly with everything that I'm seeing here on Sideshow. And also the inside information that I'm getting, not only on this Ray, but also on this Kylo Ren. And I do have a really good source. And, you know, one of the things that I'm hearing about Ray and also Kylo Ren is that they, you know, the, the, the production for these, you know, on the line is over. That's it. Even with that Ray delayed, that's it. And they are both very, 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 very close to being sold out in Hong Kong. And, you know, with that formula right now, um, I just don't see these sitting in stock very long. Is it possible that the Kylo gets in stock? I don't think that one will either, but I think it is more of a danger for the Ray, for sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and go back to SixScaleCantina.com and go back to the Biggest mover section and see what else is going on. So, little guy is back, Rich. R2-D2, original trilogy R2-D2, with all those gadgets that this in particular uh, release comes with. And there's a lot of demand for R2 right now, this particular one, um, including Luke Skywalker, which we're going to get into here in just a minute. But just briefly pulling up one of the R2s. You can see here, back from June 2nd, 38 bits, $431.82 U.S., not including the near $48 in U.S. shipping. $48 U.S. shipping, $431.82 U.S., not including taxes. Very, very, very highly sought after figure for sure is this R2-D2. And it's no surprise to me that version, what is a little bit surprising to me, uh, to be quite honest with, with, with that particular figure, is the Force Awakens R2-D2 is really not showing any signs whatsoever of trending up. And in my mind, I would think, hey, that would really fill the void, uh, you know, for, you know, an R2, you know, with the Luke Skywalker. But, you know, for me as a collector, I actually don't have any of the R2s, and I don't feel inclined to want to pick up the Force Awakens uh, R2 either. I really just feel deep down that we're going to be getting another R2-D2 in one way, shape, or form. And it's certainly very possible that that could be forthcoming in some way 
uh, with a Luke Skywalker from The Mandalorian Season 2. And, you know, um, when you go ahead and take a look at what's next to R2-D2, let's talk about Luke for a little bit here. And here is the Luke Endor Deluxe version. And this figure, as I mentioned in the last episode, is a figure that has trending up and up. And I told you in the last episode, we'll, we'll see it again this week. It has moved past the $550 tier range. And then going a little bit down, and we'll skip some of these and come back to some of them. We already talked about Luke and New Hope, and that figure has climbed up the $400 tier range. And scrolling down here just a little bit, you can see another familiar face is back. Luke Jedi Master from Return of the Jedi, back in the, in the biggest mover section. And let's go ahead and pull up some Luke Skywalkers. And <clears throat> going to them here, you can see back from May 16th, $456 for Luke Jedi MMS 429. 45 bits, 45 bits, not including $22.50 in shipping, not including taxes. Let's go to another Luke Jedi, because in the last episode I showed you a lot of the Luke Endor Deluxe, which is trending up. But here's another Luke Jedi. Back from the end of the uh, May, May 29th, four hundred and fifty-one dollars and seventy-seven cents, six bids, eleven dollars and seventy-five cents shipping, not including the taxes. Really, really, really good feedback. And then even when you go ahead and take a look at Luke Endor, the regular version, and I was telling you, this is an ongoing auction. But I've been pointing out in the last few episodes, podcasts anyway, when we have a Market Outlook edition anyway, that Luke and or non-deluxe is also showing signs of trending up. And you can see right here, with still a day left, $322 with 33 bids, 34 watches, uh, watchers for not even a deluxe version of the Luke figure. So you have to wonder, what is the demand for Luke right now? And Luke is super, super, super relevant right now in Star Wars, as he should be. Now, I am bringing up onto the screen... Everything here in stock and on pre-order with Sideshow. And actually, before we even go to that, let me go back. This one will be even better, and I'm going to go back to that one. Let me go to everything Sideshow, just pre-order, not in stock, not in stock, to show you here. I'm going back to that. So when you scroll down, I have all Hot Toys, but I also have... Sideshow. That's why you see the Grievous up there. Action figures, anyway. And as I've scrolled down here, you could see, look at Sideshow Collectibles Luke Skywalker Deluxe at $245. And it is ahead of not only the Dark Trooper from Hot Toys, but Moff Gideon from Hot Toys as well. And a plethora of other Hot Toy figures from The Mandalorian and down here as well also. And even when you look at this Luke Skywalk, it is basically neck and neck with the Luke Skywalker Snow Speeder Pilot from Hot Toys at 
and a $20 difference. And the reason why you're seeing this, to be quite frank with you, is because Hot Toys at the moment is a little off balance. They won't stay that way. They're going to get into balance. But they're a little off balance right now. And sometimes when nature is off balance, it finds a way to, to balance itself out. And collectors right now are balancing things out to fulfill what they want within their collections and also what they want just in general. There's off balance. Let's scroll up and take a look here. Who's on first? Who's on first? That, yes, I just asked, who's on first? Who's on first? No, I'm asking who's on first. Okay, so listen, this Blurg is awesome. It's awesome, man. A lot of talk about the Blurg. The Blurg this, the Blurg that. It's been Blurgamania the last few weeks, hasn't it? Blurgamania. Okay, but, but look. Look at look at C-3PO from Sideshow on pre-order. That's been out, it seems like, forever and a day. At $235. And it is selling better than Blurgamania, brother. C-3PO. At 230 This is not a Tamashi Nations C-3PO. Collectors are finding a way to create balance where balance is needed. So it's a little bit off balance right now. Who's on first? Who's on first? I just asked, who's on first? Who's on first? I'm, I'm asking you, who's on, who's on first? It, it looks like the Luke Skywalker Deluxe at $245 is, is on first compared to the Dark Trooper at $260, compared to Moff Gideon at $250, compared to the Shore Trooper Squad Leader at $230. Uh, Compared to the Shore Trooper for at two hundred and thirty dollars, compared to the Tuscan Raider at two hundred and fifty dollars, compared to the Assault Tank Commander at two hundred and thirty dollars. A little off balance right now. And what happens? When things are off balance, it could sometimes affect the hot trend. So, right now, the hot, what's hot, is the Mandalorian. Make no mistake about it. The Mandalorian is hot, it will remain hot. And you got the Book of Boba Fett coming out. Which, after the Bad Batch engine ends, they're going to start that hype machine for the Book of Boba Fett. It's going to happen. And they're going to tie it in with the Mandalorian. Even though the Mandalorian's not coming out this year, it's going to come out after the Book of Boba Fett. It's going to be a chain reaction. The Mandalorian's hot. But even when something's hot, you need to have balance. It's a thing called yin and yang. And that's what you're seeing at the moment. Is they're a little bit off balance. And not necessarily that it's this one's fault or Hot Toys' fault. or It's just the way it is. You know, when you look here, Quill's been out now for several days. And... Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett is ahead of him. Kylo Ren is ahead. 
Echo's ahead. These troopers are ahead. Rex is ahead. Ray is way ahead. And what is it with this Grievous? General Grievous. Balance. There is a huge demand when you have all the prequel figures that are out, and especially for Hot Toys. And make no mistake about it, this is a Hot Toys thing. You've got Qui-Gon Jinn. You've got Obi-Wan Kenobi from Revenge of the Sith. You've got Darth Maul. You got Count Dooku. You got Yoda from Attack of the Clones. You've got Anakin. You've got Cody. Collectors want this in their collection, as evident. This is not only selling better than anything Hot Toys has to offer with Star Wars, pre-order-wise, but also with Marvel and DC and anything else Hot Toys has. What does that tell you? There's a large demand for balance. And when you take a look and this is very important to understand. Part of the success, besides great writing, but part of the success of Dave Filoni and John Favreau and what they have done with The Mandalorian is the awesome amount of fan service given to us in the right way that mixes in with these awesome new characters that makes you want to follow these new characters that makes you want to embrace these new characters do you think the mandalorian season two would be would have been as successful without ahsoka tano without tamora morrison and boba fett without luke skywalker without R2-D2 without even Cobb Vanth with the Boba Fett armor? I mean, let's forget about everybody that I just mentioned. How excited was the world when Timothy Oliphant as Cobb Vanth adorned the, the Boba Fett armor? It was awesome, baby. And forget about all the other characters that we didn't even know were coming yet. How about Bo-Katan? How about the mention of Grand Admiral Thrawn? It's a lot of balance. You're very interested in a lot of these new characters and how they're going to flow with that. And because of COVID-19 and I'm sure a lot of manufacturing reasons and things put on the back burner, there is an off balance right now. And that is why you're seeing some of the weird placements on some of these figures. It's not that. Quill, quite frankly, should be higher. But is it possible it's because that there is an off balance? And here's one of the factors. Make no mistake about it. The Mandalorian is king. It is king. There, it, 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 it doesn't matter, um, you know, about Quill being there. there. There's a lot of reasons and the Blurg being here. Because when you go ahead and now put everything in stock, with stock included, everything, and this will fresh out here in a second. Okay, look what's number one. The excitement for the Mandalorian is still number one. Mandalorian and Grogu all over the world hasn't lost a thing. It's gaining momentum, actually. 
But right now, within this collective, within the sixth scale world, there's an off balance. Mandalorian is selling great. But if we could come out with a Luke Skywalker from The Mandalorian Season 2, if we could come out with a C-3PO, if we could come out with a Darth Vader, if we could come out with a Mace Windu, a Padme, an Azaj Ventress, a Savage Opress, a Cad Bane, a 212th, an Airborne Trooper, a Kit Fisto, a Bespin Han, a Bespin Luke. That breeds some balance. And then you could come out with quadruple the amount of Mandalorian related figures and it's probably going to carry all of them up together. But you're seeing a little bit of an off balance right now for whatever reason. Do I, is it possible that these figures I just mentioned come out and you hear me on all my different live shows and I say yes, baby. But what this is, what's happening right now, it's a little bit of an imbalance. And that's why you're seeing C-3PO, quite frankly, selling better than the Blurg. Darth Vader, selling better than the Blurg. Luke Skywalker, selling better than the Dark Trooper. Then Moff Giddy, then the Short Trooper squad leader, then the Short Trooper. All from Sideshow. Who's on first? Yeah, who's on first? Who's on first? Well, I just asked you who's on first. Right now, Sideshow is winning in some areas. Right now, C-3PO which has been out, it seems like, forever. It's, more, it's selling better than the Blur. Blurgamania, brother. You got C-3PO mania. You're seeing a lot of... You're seeing Grievous. You're seeing it with Luke. You're seeing it with Darth Vader. What did I basically just say? Luke. Darth Vader. C-3PO. General Grievous. This, this is like legacy characters. Just like what Favreau and Filoni did in The Mandalorian. They, they gave us Ahsoka. They gave us Boba. They gave us Luke. They gave us R2. There's balance. Sure, there's a lot more Mandalorian characters than, than the ones I just mentioned. But there's some balance. And that's what's going on right now. And I think that Hot Toys, very short order, and I'm going to spill my coffee all over, baby, are going to give us that Luke Skywalker from The Mandalorian Season 2. Look, that's the show right there, baby. That's the show. That's the figure to come out with. And that is going to put a lot of things in balance. And for a lot of people that are like, you, you know, right, right now, I mean, I mean, it, it, sure, it's, 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 and, and it should be, it's a money issue for a lot of people, or it's, 
it, it's like, you know what? I, I, you, once you get Luke in there and everybody's like, oh, what's going to happen next on The Mandalorian? You know, you know what? I want that quill. Oh, you know what? I think I will pick up that blur. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. You know, just, just putting that Luke out. Because everybody's super stoked. When you have that balance, watch out when that comes out. And do I think that now, and like I said, there's a myriad of reasons. Check out the live episode that we just came out with on Friday. And I got the link to that, baby, within the video description below. We talk about a lot of this kind of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, I believe that Hot Toys is very, very set to be coming out with a couple of prequel errors figures, a couple of original trilogy figures, and a couple of those balance figures from Favreau and Filoni from the uh, Mandalorian Season 2, and perhaps the Book of Boba Fett that are going to blow us out of the water. But that's what's happening right now. For sure. Let's go ahead and go back to SixScaleCantina.com and get back to the biggest mover section, baby. All right, so back at the biggest mover section. And as I told you at the onset of the program, I was going to mix in the sideshow segment with the biggest movers segment, and perhaps also when we get to the market value chart. So that's the story, really, what I think is going on with Luke Skywalker here. This Endor Deluxe, you see this trending up. You see Luke A New Hope trending up. You see Luke Return of the Jedi trending up. And then that's going to go ahead and bring us right to the OG Mandalorian, which is trending down. And we're going to go back to Sideshow in a minute, but let me go ahead and show you what's going on with the OG Mandalorian. How much is it trending down? Let me pull some recent stuff up. This figure right here, back from May 17th, $311 with 11 bits. Perfect feedback. Free shipping. Let's go to another one. That was $311. This one's going to be $310. $310 back from June 6th. Perfect feedback. A lot of feedback. Free shipping. Hmm. Let's go to another one. $318.48 U.S., 19 bids from June 5th, perfect feedback, $37 in U.S. shipping. So, <clears throat> you can tack out a little bit more here, probably about $17, more like, you know, $330. <clears throat> this is selling for $335. So, this figure is trending down exactly where it's at within the secondary market we're going to see when we get to the market value chart a little bit later in the show. But why is this happening with the OG Mandalorian? You can go ahead and get the shinier armor, the upgraded armor, and the Grogu's with this Mandalorian versus spending what you got to spend for the OG Mandalorian within the secondary market. And there's so many of these Mandalorians that are out there that I think that that's the reason. Certainly, not as much because you can go ahead and get the OG Mando with the Blurk. I know we spoke about that. And you can get the OG Mando with the Blurk at $555, which is going to cost you over $620. But I also think in conjunction with that, there is just so many of these Mandos. And you can go ahead and get, which is basically to me almost, it, 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 it should be like a DX. This this Mandalorian and the Child Deluxe, it, it comes with an, an incredible amount of accessories. And you also got this Mandalorian and the Child, uh, um, you know, non-deluxe for $260. And I think that there are so many of these right now that it's affecting 
the OG Mandalorian a little bit. Now, there's going to be a lot of nostalgia uh, with this OG Mandalorian. And I think at the end of the day, once these start selling through, you're going to start seeing that OG Mandalorian start to elevate up within the secondary market. It's going to get back into the mid-350s, and it will hit the $400 tier range, and is going to settle somewhere between $400 to $450, I believe, absolutely for sure. But right now, there's a lot of these on. These just came in stock. You'll probably see the OG Mandalorian go way more up once these hit wait list. Even with this Blurg and OG Mandalorian on Sideshow right now, because we've talked about this before. But I think one of the things we didn't talk about or I didn't talk about with it, is the impact with these best car Mandalorian figures. And just like at the beginning, where people slept on the OG Manda because of these really awesome looking best car, you know, Mandalorian figures. I, I have them both. I like them both. I think that in in many ways the OG Mando has a it pops out a little different. Of course you, you know, this shiny armor is, you know, th this is fantastic as well. They're both just as good. But I think you're kind of having the same effect right now. You know, people are going ahead and budgeting. They're planning. You know, do I really need two Mandos in my collection? You know, he's not exactly at the level of Boba Fett yet, where it's like, well, I really want the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. I want the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. I want the Vintage Color Boba Fett. I want the um, holiday, uh, you know, the animated series Boba Fett. I want every Boba Fett. And I think that Din Djarin is getting there. Uh, but it's really the Mandalorian itself and, and, and Baby Yoda, the child and Grogu, that, that, that has taken off uh, with, with Din Djarin. And I don't think it's there yet. And I think that you're seeing some people pick and choose maybe which Mando that they want. At the end of the day that OG Mandalorian is going to be very, very highly sought after. And I do think by uh, the end of this year, you're going to see it back for sure within the $400 tier range. But I think you're seeing a little bit of an effect of a lot of Mandalorians within the secondary market. And where that was going for it, over $400 for an OG Mando, when you can go ahead and get basically almost like a DX with that $315 deluxe version, or even the non-deluxe version of $260, I think that that is having some impact on the OG Mandalorian, for sure. Let's go ahead and go back to 6 scalecantinacom <clears throat> And uh, Luke, uh, A New Hope, continues to surge up. Count Dooku. Count Dooku is... Uh, he is doing really, really well, everybody here. Let's bring up a couple of dudes. Let's bring up some Dukus. And you can see here, back from June 4th, $430 with 15 bits. Perfect feedback. Wow. Let's go to another Duku. This one's going to be at $442 this one sold for. Back from June 5th, $441 and 74 cents U.S. 42 bids. More perfect feedback. Good seller. Not including the $23.16 U.S. shipping. Not including taxes. Go to another Duke. <laughs> June 2nd, $455. 27 bits. I'm really just, just a few of them. $16.99 expedited shipping. Not including that. Great feedback. Dooku is killing it. Is it possible that Cal Dooku is going to hit the $500 tier range? And I say, yes, I do. I really, really, really do. Do I think that they could come out with another Dooku? I sure do. 
I think that they could come out with a Clone Wars version of Count Dooku. Um, but you see what happened when they've come out with the Clone Wars version of Anakin and what's going on with that figure. And I think if we're going to see Dooku again, that's how we're going to see Dooku. Um, and this, for sure, I think is going to be a $500 tier range figure. And here's another one while we have it up. And you're going to see it back in the biggest mover section. But this one is ongoing. And what I'm telling you that I'm seeing a lot of signs that the deluxe version of Obi-Wan Kenobi from Revenge of the Sith is going to hit the $600 tier range. I am telling you, it is showing signs. And you can see this ongoing uh, auction right now. Already up to $560 with 11 bids for a deluxe Obi-Wan Kenobi. Wow. Hot Toys, please, put out that Clone Wars version, which will help fill the gap. For a lot of collectors, for sure. Let's go ahead and go back to the biggest mover section. And you see Obi-Wan Kenobi right under Grand Moff Tarkin, who continues to surge up. We talked about him in the last show. Han Solo from A New Hope. Obi-Wan Kenobi from A New Hope continues to surge up. Dark Side Anakin, we talked about him last episode, many episodes actually. Continues to show that trend. Look who's brand new. Leia and Wicket, two-pack. So this was showing signs. But for the longest time, this was right at the retail price. Um, this, this particular figure. Now it's showing signs of coming back up and, you know, pulling up a couple of Leia and Wicket, this two-pack. $469, two sold already. Good seller here. And, you know, I could pull this up over here. Just back from April 5th, back in the month of April. $470. And you see even now with Leia and Wicket. You know, coming back just from June 1st, 55 bids. You know, sold at $421.89. And this is starting to, by the dollar, by the dollar, starting to inch up within the secondary market. And is it possible that this is going to be a very highly sought after two pack? And I say yes. I actually have this two pack. The Leia is magnificent, like all of the original trilogy Leias. Make no mistake about it, it really is. And uh, the Wicked is awesome. I love the Wicked. Um, I know there was, uh, in some of the reviews, uh, apparently the color was off. I don't know. I, I saw The Return of the Jedi like 200 times, and I didn't realize the color was off. Maybe it is. Who knows? It looks like Wicked to me. But it's a great figure. Um, must be something with my eyes. Um, yeah, but, I mean, continuing to go up. And let's go here and look at some other new new shakers and, and movers. So, um, we already talked about Luke Return of the Jedi. Chewbacca, New Hope. Talked about that last episode. Surging up. Jedi, TK14057. We talked about that as well. That is surging up in the biggest mover section. We're going to see exactly where that is sitting within the market value chart in just a few minutes. Death Star Gunner. It's trending down. But kind of like that Generoso. Deluxe trending down. It's not like it's affordable now. It's it's just it, it, trending down slightly. We're going to see exactly where it's sitting at, but you know, just bringing in some some recent recent data on the Death Star Gunner. You can see even back from May thirtieth, five hundred and ten dollars with twelve bids. So obviously under the average, wherever it was, uh, you know, mid or high five hundreds, thirty eight dollars and fifty five cents in shipping. Let's go to another Death Star Gunner, and that was just from May thirtieth. And you can see even an earlier one here, you know, back from April 30th, $433, and, you know, with 20 bids. So again, you know, when you look at some of these within the market value chart, just because if the trend is 550, that doesn't mean that it's always selling 550. It means it's selling 500, and sometimes 450, and sometimes 600. Exercise patience when you're, uh, you know, 
shopping and hunting, and you're hunting these Star Wars Hot Toys action figures or any collectibles such as this, if you exercise some patience with some of these eBay auctions and try and get some that's at an off time or when there's multiple ones going on or check out some of the buy-sell groups, you can find better deals. Again, with the averages that are on the market value chart, they are averages. Let's go back to biggest mover section. You know, you see a lot of these uh, here going down from there. Darth Vader 40th continues to rise up slowly. Yoda, Attack of the Clones, Incinerator Trooper is trending down. Cody, very, very slowly going up. Leia, New Hope continues to go up. Darth Maul DX is back, back in the biggest mover section. Let's take a look at some of these. We'll go right to it. So, uh, Leia Steady, again, you know, here's one. She's somewhere like the $500 tier range low. $500 tier range. That doesn't mean every time it sells uh, in the 500s. Here's one just from May 30th with 21 bits at $460. Now, mind you, $34.45 in shipping. Um, and not including taxes, but, you know, again, just because it's listed at 501 I mean, you know, uh, exercise some patience, you could get it. it. There's an average, sometimes lower, sometimes higher, little bits. <clears throat> Continue to look at some of these. Uh, here's a heavy infantry Mandalorian. Continues to stay strong. And you can see right here. Let's go ahead and pull up this uh, original listing. And just back from June 6th. Near $440 US with 37 bits. Not including, wow, that's approximately $70.12 uh, US shipping. Wow, okay, so... Yeah, four, five, like I said, the trend here is somewhere around like 444 or it's close to 450. This sold for 440, 70 dollars in shipping. You know, probably more like you know for 60, for 70. Um, this figure just continues to have high demand. Um, same thing with with Qui Gon inching its way. I think it's like a 308 or 311. We'll take a look at it in a minute, but. Qui-Gon Jinn, just back from June 2nd, you know, $316.83 U.S. with 41 bits. And this is high shipping as well to the U.S., $47.86. Wow. Darth Maul back. We're just talking about that. Seeing what's going on with Darth Maul from the DX-16. June 4th, $415 with 21 bits. You can go ahead and go back to DX16. Again, not all of them sell at 414. Here's one from June 2nd with 31 bids at $363.98. But again, $61.18 in shipping, so <laughs> pretty much basically near $400. Here's another DX16. $380 back from May 29th, 42 bids. $27 in shipping, not including taxes. Continues to stay hot. And, you know, when you look at some of these figures up on here, and we're going to go to the market value chart and see exactly where some of these are sitting. Again, whatever the average is, if you try and exercise some patience, and obviously when you when, when you're on eBay, you you get into, uh, with these auctions, there is a bidding war. So when you when you really have your, your mind set on a particular auction, and you really feel good about the seller, and you're really thinking in your mind, boy, I can get this at a good price, I think. You start putting in your bids. But then you start, like, getting into, like, this, th th it's an auction. You can a lot of times go higher than maybe what you intend. And that's something to keep in mind when you're shopping on some of these platforms that aren't buy sell groups, for instance, such as eBay, for hot toys within the secondary market. You can kind of be like, oh, 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 go, go, go in the last minute, and everybody seems to follow the last 60 seconds and up to the last 30 seconds and 10 seconds. You know what I'm talking about. And then you wind up spending more than what you thought, but you got what you wanted. And then 
you know, it, 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 you could kind of get caught in that race. Again, patience. I look at some of those. I sometimes look for listings instead. Some reputable sellers, you know. I look for a lot of pictures. Maybe reach out. See what they're willing to do. See also about some buy-sell groups. And they're not always perfect either. Don't always think you're going to get the bargain of the century on a buy-sell group. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes you will. But patience is key. But when you get sucked into that bidding war, the patience goes, even if you just get, oh, I'm going to go ahead and bid on this auction. We'll see. I think I'm going to get it. Then you're like, oh, darn it. Well, you know what? I can pay a little more. Let's go more. Again. And then you can wind up going more than what you think and many times go up more than the actual trends within the market value chart just from bidding. Just fruit for thought. All right, let's go ahead and go to the final segment of this episode of the Market Value Chart Show, this Market Outlook Edition. And let's go to the Market Value Chart and see what's cooking, baby. And remember, whenever you go to the Market Value Chart, hit that current value uh, column a couple of times right here in that column where it says current value. So you get the highest ranked figures to the lowest ranked figures so that it is easier to navigate. So Han and Chewing and New Hope continues to stay steady at $900. Is it showing any trends of coming down or going up? Well, we can go ahead and take a look. We haven't talked about uh, this two-pack trend-wise in a, in, in a long time. You can, you know, again, if the average is 900 that means it sells many times, maybe close to $1,100. It also means it could sell in the $800 or high 700s or in the 700s. So here's a, here's a for instance right now. Here's an ongoing auction with somebody with really good feedback and a lot of feedback. $860 with 48 bids and one day and four hours left with 45 watchers, $21.48 shipping. So again, $40 away from just $900. Where this will go, we'll have to keep an eye on it. But you can go ahead and take a look at another Han and Chewy. Again, sometimes high 700s, sometimes high 1,000. And here's one right here that just sold back in May 12th, for instance. $810.69 with 38 bids. Good seller, great feedback. $41.36 U.S. shipping. So again, looking at this average at the market value chart, this sold for you know, $810.69, not including shipping and taxes. But the market value chart has the average at $900. But that's the average. So again, if you exercise some patience with some of these things, you can sometimes get it for, like I just said, the 800 something that that one was. And sometimes if you don't have patience, you can get it for $1,000 or $1,100. And sometimes when you get into that bidding war, you can get right up to where 900 is, and even more than that, way more than that. And that's where you can kind of exceed these a lot. And so I think auctions are great. But then again, you know, take a look at some listings as well. Because with some of the reputable dealers out there, some of the listings are right at the value. And, you know, you just got to kind of weigh things in. You know, if you're going to be able to bid on an auction, but you're only going to go so far, Kind of like when you go to the casino and you're only going to put in so much. That's probably the way to go. Target Invader, 840. Um, Anakin Darkside, 805 and rising. We talked about that last episode. Boba Fett animated. Rising Emperor Deluxe, 629. Rising K2SO, 629 and rising. Anakin Revenge of the Six, 615 and rising. It broke that $600 tier range. Short Trooper, we talked about that. Last episode, 579 and dipping. We'll see about that one. But Grand Moff Tarkin, 566 and rising. And here's this Obi Wan Deluxe that we were talking about earlier in the show. $558 and trending up. Is it possible that this Obi Wan hits the $600 tier range? I already answered that, I believe. Come well, on, it's coming. I think it is. There's your Luke Return of the Jedi Deluxe, $544 and rising. Wow. Here's Obi-Wan Kenobi, A New Hope, 
A New Hope one, 535 now and trending up. There's that Jetta, TK14057, 533 and trending up. Your Jin Erso Deluxe still trending down at 524, but, you know, that's not exactly a bargain, folks. Lay a New Hope, 510, raise it, rising up. Cheer it over to $500 tier range, you see here. $505 and rising. Here's your Han Solo, a New Hope, $500 exactly. Is that going to continue to stay within the $500 tier range? And I say, yes. That one absolutely is. And it's showing the signs that it is for sure. Death Star Gunner, like I said, trended down. It's out of the $500 tier range. But it's at $494 and trending down. And this figure will stay somewhere within the $400 tier range. Again, as I mentioned in the last show with, with a lot of these figures, you've got so many figures that are, kind of, uh, that, that are coming out. And then you had figures that, you know, came onto wait lists and have now entered the secondary market. And plus, you know, Hot Toys, they're, they're going to. There's that balance thing. They're going to get a lot more figures even this year. So there's only so much gas in the tank, only so much blood from the stone, only so many cookies within that cookie jar. So you're going to see. That's why you're seeing some trends up and some trends down. You know, people kind of go ahead and budgeting out and figuring things out, things I've talked about the last, you know, couple of episodes. I mean, you know, it's just natural when you start getting more and more figures. Here's Obi-Wan non-deluxe at 480. Is this going to crack the $500 tier range? Hmm. General Soul Disguise, we talked about that the last time, rising up 465 and trending up. Here's Luke Return of the Jedi now. Up a little bit, $454 and rising. Wow. Krennic, 444. Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, 444 and rising, rising. Showing the signs are rising. You know, we're going to have to see, you know, is that going to crack $450 this year? We're going to have to keep an eye on it. Count Dooku, 441 now. Wow, now in the 440s. Count Dooku. Again, is it possible Count Dooku gets to the $500 tier range? I answered it before. I think it is. Chewbacca, 438, trending up. Wow. There's your Leia and Wicket now at $421 and rising. And I think that this will be continue to be a slow burn up. But I do think that this, this set will be over $500 at the end of the day. Exactly where it'll be, we'll have to keep an eye on it. There's R2-D2, uh, New Hope, the original trilogy one. $419 and rising. Wow. Luke, again, inching up. 411 was in the low 400s for a little bit. Remember, just a couple months ago, broke into the $400 tier range. Now rising up, $411. Commander Cody, 402, uh, staying there, showing signs of coming up, but it's also showing signs that it could come down. Collecting a lot of data on this. I hope to have an update within the next uh, couple of episodes for sure. Kylo Ren, The Last Jedi, 401 and rising, uh, rising up. But as we talked about in the beginning of the episode, with what's going on at Rey. Is it possible that that's what's going to happen with this Kylo Ren, the last Jedi version? And there isn't a whole lot going on with this figure right now. There's not a whole lot out there. You're going to have to keep an eye on it. But I think it is possible that that's what's going to happen with that. Look at Darth Maul, DX-16, $386. It is $14 away from the $400 tier range. You talk about a slow burn. To the $400 tier range, this figure's on that course. Um, let's continue to go down and see some of these here. Darth Vader, Empire Strikes Back 40th, 355 and climbing. Yoda, Attack of the Clones, 355 and climbing. Remnant Trooper, back trending up, $351. Stormtrooper from Rogue One, MMS 393, climbing up, $347. Um, there's your Luke, Return of the Jedi Endor, showing a lot of signs of actually moving up from this $340 that it's, that it's at. We'll have to keep an eye on it for sure. Royal Guard trending down, $334 and trending down. We'll, we'll see if that lasts there, where that's going to go. There's your Mud Trooper at $330 and trending down. Ray Jedi Training, right? Okay, so that's where it's at, $329. And trending down. We'll have to see exactly where that lands or where that levels out at. And here's your Mandalorian. OG Mandalorian, TMS 007. 
now at $326 and trending down. Again, I think this is going to be short term and it's going to come back up. Uh, let's continue to go down. Qui-Gon Jinn, 313 now and rising up, getting closer to around that $325 range. There's your Ray and BB-8. Again, it was higher. Now it's trending down $312. Um, I'm honestly not even surprised with this set, even, even what I've talked about before. This set was also very... This set had ebbs and flows written in the disclaimer, I think, too. This was always kind of a little bit weird, this set there. Um, Finn Disguise tra trending down. I talked about the reasons there. Last episode... Um, yeah, so there you go. So that is going to go ahead and bring to a conclusion this episode of the Market Value Chart Show. Please go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. And please go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to Six Scale Cantina right here. I really do appreciate your support. Please continue to spread the word around about Six Scale Cantina and also SixScaleCantina.com and the market value chart. Again, your support is very much appreciated. And if you like what you watched here, and you enjoyed some of the um, insight that I brought up within this episode, and you want some expanded analysis or some extra thoughts on some of these hot toy trends, or you want some behind-the-scenes um, of what goes on with the SixScaleCantina.com and, and Six Scale Cantina and the market value chart, and you want to see some unboxings like I talked about in the last episode when I get like new figures in and some spill your coffee moments or, or whatnot, you may want to consider becoming a Cantina Insider. So I got that little join button right in the channel there. If you click on it, it tells you everything that it comes with. And... Um, you know, if you want some extra content, if you want some extra, you know, shorter, shorter shows that have some expanded stuff and some, um, you know, early access to some, perhaps some future content, early, early thoughts on some future content, you may want to consider becoming a Cantina Insider. So just letting you know about that. Remember, as I said, at the onset of the program, I will be on the Man of Hot Collectibles live episode. This coming Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So please don't miss that. And then I will be back with another live episode of the Market Value Chart Show the following Friday, Friday, June 18th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Go ahead and put both of those on your calendars for sure. Please go ahead and join us on Facebook. It's an awesome group and it's growing very, very rapidly, just like this channel. We talk a lot about the content here, a lot about hot toys in general. I got the link within the video description below along with my Instagram and also this Discord group which I try and participate in and I do and it's an awesome group about hot toys. You'll love it. Got the link within the video description. Remember, many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. See you next time.